So you're about to apply to medical school and everybody around you is just pulling out their hair and about to have hair loss like, like me. But what instead could you do to make sure that 2020 or whenever you're applying to medical school, the process is stress-free? That's exactly what we'll talk about in this video. All right guys, welcome to another episode of the MD Journey. We're here, we're all about helping people just like you succeed on their medical journey with less stress. My name is Lux, I'm currently an internal medicine resident. So if you are new to this channel, I've been helping people um, like you through blog posts, videos, and now podcasts. Um, and so if this is the first time stopping by, then definitely consider hitting a subscribe button on YouTube as well as the subscribe and follow on podcasts if you're listening. And after going through the video, if you enjoy the content, then go ahead and hit that like button to support and make sure it gets out in front of more and more people. But today I want to speak to the pre-meds on the other side of this camera who are possibly going to be applying to medical school within the next few months as well as in the future whenever you're watching this, of how to make the process less stressful, what kind of things you should be doing, what type of timeline I should create for you to make the process both effortless as well as kind of stress-free that way when your peers are freaking out you're like well I'm good just waiting on my admission letters to come in but in all reality and seriousness we just want to make sure that you're doing the things from start to finish they're going to help you obviously get in front of the eyes of med school admission board without feeling stressed out in the months of July August and September so in this episode I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step approach to kind of help you through the application process and making it stress-free um, and if you enjoy the content and you want to learn a little bit more about how to do well on your pre-med journey then one great resource that I recommend is you guys check out uh, one of the ebooks that we have on Amazon for 99 cents um, called The Pre-Med Journey. And this book is essentially a blueprint from start to finish on how to succeed on your pre-med journey and eventually get that coveted um, med school acceptance. Let's get into today's video. And the first thing that I want you to do to make this experience you know, less stressful is to actually keep a list of your experiences. And I recommend if you haven't done this, um, then to start the fall semester of, I guess, your third year of college um, or your spring semester of the year that you're gonna apply and make a list of everything you've done. This is not a CV, it can just simply be a Word document and go ahead and just simply type in every experience. And these experiences can be a variety of sizes. They can be really impactful. They can be something that you just did one time. And now the next thing that I want you to do is look through each experience and simply type in two or three bullet points of your biggest takeaways from that experience. So for example, maybe as part of a community service project, you worked a weekend with Habitat for Humanity. Maybe you're helping build a home for somebody in need. You may have enjoyed working with a team and other individuals who all had a common goal of helping this one person that could use their service. So those would be some takeaways and then you would put in the Word document. And we just kind of came up with those kind of on the fly, but they sound pretty amazing. And essentially what you would do is you would go through each of the experiences and you would truly take some reflection. This is not a one day kind of activity. It's something you can do over the course of a week or two. But the idea is you're going to have all the experiences you've done all community service, anything academic related, anything research related, any shadowing experience. Um, and this can be as, you know, as far back as kind of later years in high school, if you kind of have something, um, as well as your early years in college. And if you've taken a gap year, then those experiences will also be included. But then you're able to do a few things with these takeaways. One, you're able to use them in your essays. You're able to use them in your applications. And it also helps to form some common themes of what is important and what experiences you value. For example, you may see after a list of 20 experiences that really only four or five are the most pertinent and the ones that speak most directly to your desire to become a physician. You know, going off of our last example with Habitat for Humanity, maybe you realize you do enjoy working with your hands. And the other four experiences on this list also had something of similar nature. And then use these experiences and kind of create a cohesive theme about enjoying working with your hands and maybe considering a field in surgery or something interventional or procedural. And you can use this in your personal statement, application, as well as your interview process. Simply taking the time to create a list of all your experiences, not just a CV and ask yourself, what did I really take away from each experience is going to help you kind of find a common theme. And if you could do that, you're already one step ahead of most med students because the typical approach is most med students will create a list um, and they'll categorize them into community service, they'll categorize them into shadowing, to research. But there's no common theme that they may have through their application. It's just experience loading. Um, and, if you're not, and if you're like any med student, and if you're like any pre-med, it's typical to want to do a lot to stuff your application. But it's very difficult at times to be able to distinguish what your goals and what the common themes and virtues you value as a future physician. So definitely do this experience exercise. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But it's going to help with the, some of the few things that we're going to talk about later in this episode. Now, it's the second thing that I want you to do. And again, I'm going to 
assume that this is late fall as well as early spring of the year you'll be applying, um, is to do a mini personal statement. Now I know whenever I talk about essays, people start freaking out, you get anxiety, you may feel like you're a writer's block, you're not a good writer. But this is not the, the final personal draft. It's not even the true personal draft. This can be a, a paragraph two or three, simply answering the question, why do you want to become a physician without getting really fluffy. And the reason for this personal statement is two things. One, to make sure, you know, did your takeaway practice from the first tip help you identify some common themes of what you want, what your goals may be, even if everything is not crystal clear, that's okay, but you may start getting a direction. And two, you can then use this personal statement. Again, it can be a very sketchy draft um, with at least some decent grammar. You can then give it to your letter writers and the next tips I will talk about and give them an indication of why you want to go into medicine, what experiences you've had. And again, you want to see if your common themes can be tested um, and your uh, letter writer may tell you, you know, this is a good approach. These are good reasons of going into medicine and they can use those in their letters of recommendation that they give you. That brings us into the third step or the third tip is to ask for your letters of recommendation early and ask for multiple of them. And so most med schools will ask for anywhere from three to upwards to five letters of recommendation. And it's important to over the years, obviously, to have an idea of who could write one. Um, definitely during your spring semester, you may have one or two professors that you may want to ask. If you've done research with somebody, you may want to consider um, having a letter from them. And the bottom line is it's better to have more letters of recommendation than you would use for certain institutions. But once you identify potential letter writers, make sure you meet with them, email them, and then ask them if they're willing to write you a strong recommendation for medical school. If they're just going to write you a template where they just kind of fill in your name, your GPA, how you did in the class, that's not the letter you want. Essentially, better not having that than having it in the first place. So definitely make sure they're willing to write you a little strong one if not consider going elsewhere. Once your potential letter writers agree, it's important to one, give them that mini personal statement that you wrote as well as your list of experiences um, and your takeaways, and then also give them an actual formal CV. This way they can kind of see a cohesive idea of everything you've done, why it's important to you, why you want to go into medicine, and ideally the letter that they'll give you will be better. And it's important to also give them a deadline of a week and a half to two weeks before the actual application goes live because this is the big thing that I want to mention in this video that will help your whole experience become stress-free. So listen up, pro tip, you know, like alarm, start listening, put the phone away. And that is you are going to have an easier time getting into medical school, a less stressful experience if you get your application in within the first week that it goes live. I know this is not going to happen for every individual for different circumstances. Maybe you have to retake your MCAT and you have to wait for the score to come back um, or you're waiting to get your final transcript. But for most people, your goal should be that first week, that either the first two or three days, your application is submitted um, and it's done. And the reason for this is imagine you're the admission board. The application pools are starting to come, they're gonna come in quick on the first day, which is like May 1st, May 30th, depending on the application and the location you're at. But as I see more and more applications through the month of May, June, and July, I may see a lot of those students that have similar applications. And later on in the process, I may say, you have to do a little bit more to impress me. It's just very natural to have that bias. You know, you're initially, you're not sure if there's gonna be something better later on in the pipeline. So you might as well just take and give that person an interview versus later on, you've seen enough of what the applicant pool looks like, your threshold of what's acceptable for an interview is going to be higher. So it's important for you as an applicant to get that application to them in front of them quicker. That way that threshold, the amount of applicants that they've seen before years is not as much as they would see in let's say July or August. So that's the biggest takeaway from this video is to get that application in early, which is why the process I'm walking you through in this video is giving you kind of a step-by-step -step of how to make sure that application gets submitted on the first few days uh, that it goes live. Now going down our window of trying to make the process less stressful is I want you to start looking at the schools you're interested in. Sometimes there may be a generic application um, depending on what state you're in or if you're applying nationally um, to go ahead and start creating a list of all the prompts you may have to do. So there's going to be a generic um, application that I'll link down below um, to the generic uh, med school application as well as there's one for like the state of Texas and they usually use the same prompts every single year so it's not like you have to wait for the application to go live to see what your essay should be about just simply look at what it was last year the year before and if it's been the same it's likely going to be the same thing again so go ahead and have that as your main prompt 
for that application. Um, and some schools will also have what they call secondary applications. They may have certain questions and essays they want you to write for their institution. Um, and depending on the institution, they may just send you a secondary application um, as soon as you send them the first one, or they may want to evaluate the first one and then send their secondary to a certain amount of students. But assume that you're going to get that secondary application from those institutions. It's important to create a list of all the essays. There's definitely going to be some overlap where you ask similar questions between institution and applications. So you want to first start prioritizing working on your actual personal statements. These are the big essays. And then start to go ahead and work on the prompts for the secondary essays. And your goal should be, depending on when you're watching this video and how far you are from applying, is to have those essays you know, started in the month of March and April. That way, when May comes around, your essay is done. It's been reviewed by a few people. It's obviously checked for grammar and for quality, and you're happy with them. Because in that first week that the application goes live, you're not worried and focused on trying to get your essay to be perfect and other people to review it. Instead, you're just kind of plugging and chugging the application. You're copying and pasting your essay. Um, and this, again, the experience is not stressful. And I know a lot of you guys may think this is a lot, but I promise you, if you don't take this advice, I've seen on the other end where I've given this advice to pre-meds and then they're still working on their essays in the month of June and July. And that may not seem like a big deal because the med school applications will go live and continue all the way till October. So you're like, well, I have enough time. But remember that concept I told you. There are people that have already submitted their application while you're still working on your essays. And so there's admission boards who are evaluating their for interviews. They've already seen what their essay is and their application looks like. And here you are still trying to get your essay to be perfect. And your threshold of likely getting an interview is going to get higher and higher. So just make sure you understand that concept that you obviously want to work on these essays earlier. You still want the quality, but you want to work on them earlier. And if you're working on them in the month of June and July, you're already behind the eight ball. My last tip on this timeline to make the experience less stressful is to make sure you give yourself as well as your letter writers and any other person responsible for a part of your application, whether that may be proofreading your essays or anything of the sort, is to give them a deadline of one and a half weeks to two weeks before the deadline. So if the essay and the application goes live on May 1st, then make sure that like April 15th is your deadline where all your letters of recommendation should come in. Um, people who are responsible for reading your essay start to give you feedback because then that gives you two weeks to go ahead and just tidy everything up. Maybe give the letter writer an extra week to get everything in. Maybe you have some tech issues where things aren't getting submitted the way you wanted them to. Um, or maybe you need to work on an essay a little bit more after a reviewer gives you some feedback. Um, that little two week buffer is going to be a time where, okay, I'm stressing out, application is about to go live. But when the application does go live, you know, ideally you've given yourself enough time to make some adjustments um, and fix your essays, have your letters of recommendations in, and then you can ideally just copy and paste and hit submit. So I know that was a lot, guys, and honestly, it can be stressful when I break the process in that form because it seems like you're doing a lot of work when you're taking classes uh, and you're thinking about graduation and things of that sort. Why can't you just push this to May, June, and July? But we've already talked about why. So make sure you set aside some time, um, your spring semester, your fall semester, to really help the process become stress-free when it's time to apply, as well as giving yourself the best chance of getting accepted. That's basically my blueprint on how to make the application part less stressful. But if you do want a blueprint on how to make the whole pre-med experience less stressful, um, including how to study, how to become more productive as a college student, as well as the application process, but also things like studying for the MCAT, um, as well as interviewing and getting accepted in medical school, you guys can check out one of the courses that we have and offer on the MD journey called the Pre-Med Blueprint, where we walk you from start to finish, regardless of what phase in your pre-med journey you're in, there's something for you to make the process more expedited like we talked about in this video. And of course, if you you guys have more questions for your pre-med journey, your medical journey, you guys can drop them down in the comment section down below. If you made it to this far, that video and the like button still hasn't been clicked, but you've enjoyed the content, then go ahead and support the channel by just hitting that like button like, oh, maybe two times. And if you're also new to the channel and you haven't hit that subscribe button, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to get two videos just like this on a weekly basis. That's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening if you're listening on the podcast. And I will see you guys in future videos. Thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you guys on yours. See you guys in the next one. Peace.